Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be unboxing the Savage Oryx, the Wurgog Prophet, and then taking a look at the Warcry Harbingers of Destruction supplement book to see what kind of warband we can put together for Warcry. Here we are, here's the Savage Oryx, the Wurgog Prophet, and the Harbingers of Destruction book. And to start with, the first thing we'll do is we'll unbox the Savage Oryx, take a good look at the sprues and the instructions and see what kind of miniatures and models we can build from the contents. We'll also unbox the Wurgog Prophet and have a quick look at him. And then once we've done that, we'll have a good look through the Harbingers of Destruction book and see what fighters we can use, what stats they've got, and just see exactly what we can get from this great looking set. So let's get started with the Savage Oryx. And here they are, and I picked these up from Element Games, and the RRP on this box set was £32.50, but they do a great discount there, so I was able to get them for £27.63, so just over £27. And I'll put a link in the descriptions below, so you can get a discount too, and that'll be an affiliate link, uh, but it won't cost you anything extra, in fact it's going to save you that money, and for every sale made through that link, I'll get a small commission, that's going to help me do loads more videos like this, so thanks so much for that support. Really appreciate it. And I'll put links for the Wurgog Prophet and also the book as well as we go through. But let's get on with it. So here's the box and it gives you a good idea of what you're going to get. And this set you can build loads of different versions and different fighters from the Savage Oryx. So you can have these guys with the stabbers or you can have like the archers and they've got axes, all different weapons. So there's tons going on here. So if you look on the Games Workshop website, you'll see that they've got it listed separately. So if you wanted to just build 20 of the archers, then you would buy uh, that box, but they are all the same box set. So that's what's really good about this, is in here, you're gonna to get tons of variation and different mini uh, miniatures and fighters that you can build. So this is perfect for Warcry. And with the new books now, the supplement books opening up all the fighters from Age of Sigmar, this is great value in my mind. So for 27 pound, you're getting 20 miniatures, which is pretty much all you would need to build a warband with. And then with a little extra, like adding on the Wurgog Prophet, you've got a cool leader and then you're off and ready to go. And then with these sets as well, these are great because the Warcry sets have got around, usually around a thousand points. But if you want to go into campaign mode, you're going to need up to 1400. So these are going to give you tons of points, more than you'll ever need for Warcry. So you really could just buy this one set and not need anything else if you wanted to play savage oryx but let's have a look at what we're gonna find inside so the box art's really great nice and kind of clear and crisp a bit very different to the warcry branding there we go but on the back it's going to show you exactly who's included so there's tons of options we're going to get the options to build the savage oryx with the savage sticker the bone shield you can make the savage big stabbers with the gork tooth and you can make two of those so that's really good you can make Savage Oryx more boys with Chomper, Tooth Shiv, or you can make Savage Oryx Arrow Boys with a Stinger Bow. And then you've also got options to make a Savage Boss, a Bone Totem, and a Skull Thumper. So pretty much all of these, except the Skull Thumper, have got fighter type cards. So that's great. So you imagine with all these, you can put a real varied warband together. So really fun. So let's open it up and have a look at the, the sprues and the detail close up. Okay, let's get this open then. I'm really looking forward to opening this one and getting these built. So I'm doing the campaign, if you're following and watching that at the moment, I'm doing the campaign with the Beasts of Chaos. And so I was thinking of doing one warband from each of the different alliances. And so with these, I want to do uh, the destruction. I want to go with the Savage Oryx because they're really cool. But let's have a look inside. So there we are. I wonder, no, we're not going to get any trays or anything like that. So, tons of sprues though, so let's get these out. So we've got a pile of sprues. We've got our bases. We've got a couple of big bases. And the book. And so that's everything from the box. Let's put that out of the way. Okay, so first of all we'll go through all the sprues. Let's have a good look close up. And then we'll have a look through, through the book and see about the assembly instructions and just the variations we can use. So here we've got a bag of bases, and they're all 32 mil bases. And then we've got these two oval ones, and they're going to be for the big stabbers. And they're coming in at 60 mil in the longest 
section so you get two of those so you can build two of the big stabbers so that's the bases so you've got loads there loads of bases let's move that out of the way and then we've got all our sprues so we get six all together so there's loads here loads going on we're only going to make 20 miniatures from all this so there's you know if you're playing for Warcry, you're probably not going to make all archers so there's going to be loads of bits left over so if you want to start adding little bits to a bits box this is a great set for that but let's have a look at them one at a time and then we can see the detail and what's included. Here's our first sprue and looking great. You know, we've got some really big miniatures here. So these are going to be big boys for sure. They're going to be really fun to build. And these are the arrow boys. So we're going to get loads of the bows and arrows. And this is the what looks like the big stabber. So that's great. And there's the end of it. So you can see how long that is. That's mad. That's going to be really cool to put together. And I guess these are the the fighters you would do all the bodies you'd use for the big stabbers and then we've got these different spiked hands different weapons so these would be for the savage auric moor boys and that's a really cool it's like a, a bird's beak there's an axe it's great so these are really varied loads of different ones that's the tooth shiv so they've got some awesome names a spiked fist there that so you can see there's going to be tons of options here loads of different variations so you've really got lots of choice and variety to personalize and build these which is really good even the the arrows are in like arrow pouches that are, have got different patterns on and textures so that's really cool and that's just the first sprue so we've got six of these to go through let's get the next one and now we're looking at some of the shields and these are really great so there's 10 here and uh, it looks like those ones are quite similar, but they're all different. So you've got 10 different shields and these are the bone shields, these ones, but these are great. So much detail. The faces are all different as well. There's so much character. Here's the, the totem, the bone totem. And then these are going to be the chompers for the Savage Auric Moor Boys. So again, all different. Really great. Really impressed with this set. This is probably the most variation I've seen out of any of the box sets we've opened so far here. So that's mad. Even the bodies have got different attachments, different patterns. So these are really great. So that's sprue number two. And here's our next one. Again, we've got some more shields. Let's spin that. Different again. Oh, this looks like a repeated sprue. Ah, so this is a repeat. So there we go. So we're going to get loads of shields. So there's 12 on here. So we're going to get 24 shields. So that's a repeated one. I wonder if the... Yeah, this looks like a repeat as well. So this is a repeat of the Arrow Boys sprue. So probably the next two are going to be the same as well. So there's that one. Let's have a look at this. And now we've got these. These are the Savage Stickers. So we've got loads of those. Again, they're all different. This is perfect. Brilliant. We've got loads of arrows, so you can attach them separately. They can be holding them. We've got some more pouches. They look like they're copies of the other ones. So we've got, it looks like we've got three different ones that we can use, but loads of them. But I really like these spears, these stabbers. They're really great. And what's that? That's an interesting piece. It'd be cool to find out what that's going to be for. Looks like, oh, that's the bone thumper, the skull thumper. So he's holding that with his arm. I'll probably build that anyway, and then just include him as like a, a, a chomper or a clubber or something like that. So there's that one, and then we're on to the final sprue, sprue number six, and that's a repeat of that one. But you can see the details, fantastic on these, all different. These are going to be great to build. Really cool. So there we are, that's all the sprues. So next we'll take a look at the instruction book. Here we go, here's our instruction book, and it's A5 in size, black and white, which is a shame. I like the colour ones, they bring so much more to it, so it's a shame to get these in black and white, really, uh, but it doesn't really matter. There's lots of um, kind of ideas you can get online. The box is covered in some good images, too, so you can certainly get all the reference material you need from the box and online. There's loads there, but still, it would be nice to have this in colour. Uh, but let's have a look through. So this is going to show us that we can make the Savage Oryx, the Savage Oryx Moorboy, the Savage Orc Arrow Boys and the Savage Big Stabbers. So let's 
so I imagine this is going to be loads of sections of variation here so yeah so these are the shields that give you the choice for building the savage oryx you can also make a savage boss so you can make one of those stand out as the savage boss then we're also going to be able to make the savage oryx arrow boys and then here we've got the skull thumper the bone totem all the different faces loads of faces and here again it shows you them all laid out so this is great they're all very different loads of characters going on so this is really good so especially for a a Warcry Warband where you really focus on those individual fighters and you give them names and backgrounds. It's really good to make them stand out. And just from this, number 54 with a bone in his mouth, that could kind of give you some starting points to start thinking up narrative and background for him and things like that. So really great. And here we've got the different bodies. The arms are all different. So you're going to get some really nice poses here. I think this is where the Age of Sigmar box sets are really great. And although you don't get the cards and the ability cards and fighter cards that you get in the Warcry sets, you do get the option to customise and position the fighters exactly how you want them. And I think that's really great. And certainly now with the, the books, the supplement books like the Harbingers of Destruction, you don't even need those cards and ability cards now. All the information's in the book. So this is, a, this is really good. Uh, but it is nice to get those cards, so if you can get them. But here we are. So we've got the Savage Auric, the Auric Moor Boys, the Auric Arrow Boys. And again, all your different variations for shields, for chompers and clubs and stabbers. I mean, there's tons. There's just tons. So it's going to really take some time to go through this and decide which ones you want to build, which is all part of the fun. Uh, here we've got the Savage Big Stabbers. So you can make two of these. So that's great. I will probably will make two because I'll give you some good options going in. And um, they're not that high in points, as we'll see later. So that's really great. And that's all the different variations. And then you've got all the information if you play Age of Sigmar. No paint guide there. I'll just check the box. I'm sure there was a paint guide on there. There we are. Yeah. So we get our paint guide here. And these are pretty straightforward. It's mostly green with a little bit of red and all the bone and leather straps and, and things like that. So really easy to paint. And we can certainly use this as a guide to do the contrast style, which I'm into. So we get a paint guide there. So that's good. So there we are. So that's all the sprues now. We've gone through the instruction book. So let's take a look at the Wurgog Prophet next. Here he is. And you don't get any fancy packaging with this, this blister style pack. And uh, it looks like a kind of resin, so a different material. Uh, let's open it up though and have a good look at him. Okay, so here we go. So it looks like we've got a 32 mil base, and then we get these two resin sprues here. Uh, so not many parts to put together. Let's come a bit closer. Let's just focus on that. There we go. But this is a really cool looking miniature. Although if I'd got him later, I would have seen that the Underworld set uh, that's coming out really soon, that's got a great uh, Wargog Prophet in there, or a Prophet in there, and also three other miniatures for just a little bit more money than this miniature. So this one was £15, and at Element Games, you can find that there. I'll put the link in the description as well. Um, but if you wait for the Underworld set, that's going to come out with a discount probably at 20 and then you're going to get a profit, three other fighters, and of course, all the cards that come with the Underworld's expansions. So I'd definitely say wait, unless you really like the look of this one. So I wish I'd waited, but I'm not, you know, I'm not too disappointed. This is an awesome miniature. And it's also going to be good to try and work with this resin and build this so that'll be quite new for me but there we are so we've got loads of detail on him the cloak's really great and then there's the second one let's make sure that's focused and so this is like the head piece so it looks like there's lots to cut off here get rid of all this bit and then we've got the leg and then this little dude here i don't know what they're called so i'll have to find out but if you know let me know in the comments below that'd be great thanks but there's his head piece and his stuff so really great detailing. And once this is all trimmed up and cleaned up, it looks like it'll just come off really easy. Yeah, it should be great when he's assembled. But no instructions, nothing else. Very simple packaging. Pretty boring, but it's going to be great once he's built, assembled and painted. And then we can start using him. And he's going to be the leader in the warband for sure. So that's why I got him. So for me, I was thinking, you know, £27 for the set of bone splitters, the Savage Oryx. 15 for him, you know, it's just over £40. You've got a really good, varied warband. Okay, so now we've opened everything. Let's take a look at the Harbingers of Destruction book and we'll go through all the fighter types that you can use from these sets. 
Here's the Harbingers of Destruction book. And if you haven't seen this already, I've done a separate video where I go through this completely in detail. So uh, there'll be a link to that in the description below or at the end of this video. So you can have a good look through the whole thing. But these books are awesome. And if you get these, then it kind of eliminates all the need for the fighter cards and abilities because they're all in here. And it's also updated all the existing warbands. But really, these books have given you access to almost all the Age of Sigmar miniatures which is really great. Even the monsters are included, or some of them. So that's awesome. So I definitely recommend getting these books. And if you play one of the alliances or want to focus on that, you're only going to need one book. You don't need all four of them for all the alliances. So if you're just playing Destruction, you could just get this one, and it's going to be packed with everything you need to get started in Warcry. As long as you've got the core rule books to go along with it, then you're fine. So you could just get the core rule book and this one, and then look at the recent Errata, and I did a, a rules update video for that. Um, so then you'd have everything you needed. So it can really be quite cost, you know, quite cheap to get into the game. A couple of books, and you've probably even got Age of Sigmar miniatures already. So this would really open up perhaps your existing collections. But anyway, let's go and get stuck in and see what we can do with the Auric War Clans. And these are the bone splitters. So let's flick, uh, flick to page 28. And before we get there, all the different factions have got like an introduction. So you get a, a background narrative and a little explanation as to why they're in the eight points, what they're up to and how they fit into the Warcry world. So this is really good. Just a couple of pages to give you a flavor of what they're all about and get you started. And then for each faction, you're going to get the fighter abilities, the leader abilities, and then you're going to get the fighter type cards. And they usually put the leaders on one page like this and then the fighter types on another with some great photos and artwork, really good. And then onto the Iron Jaws. So for the Bone Splitters, it's quite small. There's not a huge amount of choice, but I think the choice you do get is really nice and varied. So you're gonna get, all together, there's an option for nine different leaders and then an option for 10 fighters. So you, know, you, you wouldn't have to get many sets to have all of this. And with what we've got, so we've got this Bone Splitters Savage Oryx set, we can use the Savage Auric Araboy, the Moorboy Bone Totem Bearer, the Moorboy, the Stabbers, Chomper and Bone Shield, Savage Sticker and Bone Shield, and then these ones are the Boar Boys, so they're all the mounted ones, so we won't have those, but we get six out of the ten fighters, and then turning over to the leaders, we're going to get access to a Savage Arrow Boss and a Savage Auric Moorboy Boss. You could also, if you wanted to, like take one miniature and assign him as a Savic Auric Boss with Chomper and Bone Shield. So you could do that too. And then these ones are going to come with the Boar Boy set. And this Maniac Weird Knob. I think he's in there. Is he in there? He might be a separate miniature actually, this one. Yeah, he's a separate one. The War Doc's a separate one. We've got the War Gog Prophet. And this is a separate one too. But I even think you could take one of the miniatures from this set and um, just act as if he's the savage big boss and just give him some kind of things that make him stand out. Maybe make the base a bit taller so he's bigger and then you could use him as your savage big, uh, savage big boss too. So I think that would be a really cost effective way of making this set really give you access to a lot of fighters. So you could get six out of the ten and then you could go one, two, three and the savage big boss. So you could get four potential leaders if you wanted to and then use some of the other leaders as heroes if you wanted. And then just with the one word or profit, you know, you've got yourself a, another leader there for a little bit extra. When this Underworld set comes out, you know, it's going to be about £20 with a discount. You're going to get an archer, a profit. You're going to get a guy with spikes and someone with a big club. So you could kind of use those as well and fit them into these kind of miniatures, maybe. And then, you know, because they're really individual and personal, nice. they would fit nicely as leaders and heroes for sure. And then just to run through if you wanted to buy these separately, this Savage Big Boss is £10, the War Dock is 10 the War Gog Prophet, which we've seen, is 15 This Maniac Weird Knob, I couldn't find him, so he may be included, but I'm sure he's a separate miniature. Um, but if you want to get a, a box of the Boar Boys, I think that would be worth it. You're going to get 10 altogether, and then if you got that one box, they're the same price as the Savage Oryx, 32.50, but with a discount just over 27. And then that would give you access to one, two leaders, and all the fighters. Then, so you know those two sets could potentially open this all up, and then you would just need to fill in the gaps for the leaders for whichever ones you wanted. 
So you know, it wouldn't take much for you to get all, all these fighters if you wanted to. But I think to get started, this one box set of bone splitters would be enough. And then as a bonus, if you wanted to, maybe a profit or hold on for the Underworld set when it comes out. Okay, so let's dive in and have a look at the individual fighter type cards and the abilities for these miniatures. And let's start with the fighters first, and then we'll work up to the different leaders. And so we're going to start off with the Savage Oruk Arrow Boy. This one, so all these ones we'll go through will be ones that are included in the set. So from that set, we can build these. And so this one comes in at 90 points. And he's got the faction room mark and one other room mark there. He's got two weapons. So he's got the range weapon with a minimum range of three, maximum 15. So you can't use this on anyone below three inches. And then he's got two attacks, strength three, dealing one to three on a crit. With his up close weapon with his fists, he can have a range of one, three attacks, strength three, dealing just one to two on a crit. And he's got a nice movement of four, only three toughness, but 15 wounds. So we're going to find that these Oryx have got loads of wounds. So for the points wise, they're not dealing a lot of damage as you would expect from these low point fighters. But you know, for a 65 point fighter, you're gonna expect something like this. But just going up to 90 is giving you that extra kind of amount of damage they can take. And then we'll have a look at the ability later on as well. So yeah, the, all of these are gonna come in with some really good wounds potential. So they can take a lot of damage. So that's our first one. That's the Savage Oruk Arrow Boy. And I'll go through each fighter type first and then look at the abilities at the same time. And now our next one is the Oruk Moor Boy. And he's a little bit more at 110. And he's got this Mystic Rune Mark. And here he's got a, a range of three. Can make three attacks, strength four, two to four damage, four on a crit. And he's got a movement of four, toughness three, can take 15 damage. So for that extra 20 points, you're certainly putting out a bit more there. And you've got access to another ability and a great looking miniature with that bone totem as well. So that's our second one. Then we've got the Savage Oruk Moor Boy. And this one you can pretty much give like clubs and things like that to whichever what the kind of axes and all the stabbers and things like that. So this is 110 as well. Range of one, three attacks, strength four, two to four on a crit. And he's got a different room mark for the another ability there. And the same again, movement four, toughness three. 15 damage. I did think they'd be a lot tougher these but three I suppose for the points wise You've got to keep that toughness down to make it kind of balance out But there we go. There's that one and then we've also got the savage big stabbers and these are the ones where you've got two Fighters holding that big spear and they'll come in at 175 points They've got a range of one Three attacks strength five doing three to six on a crit movement four toughness three and can take 30 damage so this is really great, a huge amount of damage they can take for that points for sure. Three attacks, really strong, and dishing out some damage too. So these are really powerful. And I think for the points, that's good value there. And if you wanted to make build two of these with that set, you could. That would take you up to 350 points to have two of those going, but really strong and really powerful. So there we go, that's those four. But we've also got access to these down here and the first one is a savage auric with chomper and bone shield so we're back down to 90 points but you're going to see here no extra abilities but they've got a range of one three attacks strength three dealing one to three on a crit but while you're uh, while you lose that ability you're gaining in toughness so we've got a movement of four toughness four and then they can take 15 wounds and the same with this one we're up to the savage auric with savage sticker and bone shield so you get a little bit extra range. So we've got a rep uh, weapon range of two, two attacks, strength three, dealing one to three on a crit, movement four, toughness four, and can take 15 damage. So this just balances it up with these. You know, the attack, the damage output is not great, but they're a little bit tougher. So they're gonna be harder to hit. So if you wanna use those to maybe protect some of the savage big stabbers uh, and kind of go like covering their flanks, if you like, as they advance, then that could be a good tactic. So there we go, that covers all six fighters that we can use from that page. And the other ones are going to be boar boys. So if you've got that boar boy set, you could unlock these as well. But now we've seen the fighters, let's have a look at the leaders. And again, we'll look at the leaders that we've got access to with this set. So starting off, we can use the Savage Arrow Boss. And he's coming in at 125 points, so pretty low for a, a kind of leader. And he's going to have the leader ability 
and this ability that all the arrow boys go with. And he's got access to two weapons, so he's got the range weapon, again, three to five, uh, 15. He can make three attacks, strength three, dealing one to three on a crit. And up close, he's got a weapon range of one, three attacks, strength three, dealing two to four on a crit. He's got movement four, toughness four, and can take 25 wounds. So for 125 points, if you want to bring this in as a hero, that's pretty good value. You know, you're getting a bit of extra damage there for one of the arrow kind of boys. So if you wanted to have three of those, maybe you could include this as a hero in there. Uh, and then if it came, any enemy came up close, he could maybe take on them and absorb some of the damage they're going to put out. So that's really low for a leader. And uh, you get access to the leader ability, even as a hero. And he's going to get this ability that all the other Arab boys get anyway. So that one's included in the box. And you're also going to get the Savage Auric Morboy boss. And at 205 points is a bit more. He's only got the leader ability. And he's got a weapon range of 1. Can make 4 attacks. Strength 4. Dealing 3 to 6 on a crit. So he can certainly put out some damage. And he's got a movement of 4. Toughness 4. And can take 25 wounds. So that's not bad. Pretty solid but no extra abilities. So for 205 points, if you're not getting any extra abilities except the leadership one, I don't know if that's worth including. Uh, but the next one, so you could also make this one. This is the Savage Oruk boss with Chomper and Bone Shield, and he's 185 points. Again, he's only got that leadership ability and the ones that come with the, the faction. And he's got a weapon range of one, can make four attacks, strength four, dealing two to five on a crit. And he's got a movement of four, Toughness 4 can take 25 damage. So there we are. They're very similar in what they're doing. Uh, this one could put out a little bit more damage um, than this one. And so you just weigh up if those extra points are worth it. And again, included in the box. So you've got lots of options there without having to purchase any other sets. So that's those three leaders. Then you've got the these three here, which are all mounted. So they're going to come with the Boar Boy set. I'm not sure about the Maniac Weird Knob, but have to check on that. And then the War Dock would be a separate one to buy. We've got the War God Prophet, so let's look at the stats for this one. And this is 225. Got the Faction Room Mark, Leader Room Mark, and one extra Room Mark here. And two weapons, so this is like the kind of magic weapon. And the range is minimum 3, maximum 7. Can make two attacks, strength 3, dealing 3 to 6 on a crit. And then up close, we've got a little bit of range actually. So weapon range of two, can make three attacks, strength four, dealing one to four on a crit. And I guess that's with the kind of club, this kind of uh, stuff he's going to hit them with. And he's got movement four, toughness four, can take 28 wounds. So for 225 points, you get a real good looking miniature, the characters there. This is pretty much as we've come to expect, like with Necromancer and these kind of mystic uh, figures, these miniatures and fighters. They're all coming in with this kind of these kind of stats, but it's the the abilities that set them apart a little bit. Then that brings us on to the final one, the Savage Big Boss. And I think you could certainly make one of these out of the fighters you've got in that set. And again, just like maybe elevate the base a little bit with some cork and, and rocks and just make it like stand up so you can really see that it is the leader and it stands out. And also give him some attachments of different things that come within the sprues. But if you did want to get him separately, for £10 you get in that model, which I don't think is that much different to the ones in the set. So I would just kind of use the, the, ones you, the miniatures you've got on the sprues and put something together. But he's going to come in at 225 points. He's got the faction room mark, the leader room mark and one other. And his weapon is a range of one. Can make three attacks, strength five, dealing three to six on a crit. Got a movement of four, toughness four and can take 30 wounds. So for 225 points, it's not that high for a leader compared to some of the warbands, um, kind of mid-range, I suppose. Uh, his damage is pretty good. You know, he's, he's strong, he can put some output there, but only three attacks, so he's not attacking a lot. So we're really gonna rely on these abilities and see if they're worth including him in it at all. So now we've seen the fighters, we've seen the leaders, let's have a close look at the abilities and see which ones apply to the fighters we've got. So let's start with the fighter abilities. And now any fighter with this rune mark, with the faction rune mark, so that could be a leader or a fighter, they're gonna be able to use this. And this is called double charge. A fighter can use this ability only if there is a visible enemy fighter within six inches of them. This fighter makes a bonus move action 
and must finish closer to the closest visible enemy fighter than they were at the start of that move action. Okay, so that's really cool. There's a few kind of uh, like conditions here, but really for a double to get that extra movement, that's really great. So as long as we meet those conditions, that's a really useful ability and fits in with the narrative of these guys just wanting to rush in and get stuck in with the battle. And so, yeah, I really like that. That's a nice ability that all the fighters and leaders can use. And there's also another one down here for the quad and this is called rampaging destroyer until the end of this fighter's activation add one to the attacks characteristic of attack actions made by this fighter in addition each time an enemy fighter is taken down by an attack action made by this fighter this activation this fighter can make a bonus move action okay that's quite long winded let's break it down then so basically this is a quad for any of the fighters or leaders, again, with that faction room mark. And until the end of their activation, so only during that one activation, add one to the attack's characteristic. And in addition, if they take an enemy fighter down, they can make a bonus move action. So there we are. So there's a good chance these guys, especially if you give this to one of the ones with a, a big output, they're going to take someone down. Then they can move and get in the fight ready for their next activation. So that's pretty useful. A quad, quite high. And whether you want to use your quad on that, or on your leader abilities would be dependent on the situation in the battle, I guess. But there we go, there's the first two that's accessible to all the fighters. So let's move on and look at the individual fighters and the abilities they're gonna come with. So with the fighters we get in our set, you see we're gonna get three different rune marks that we can use for the abilities. So we're gonna get this mystic one and these two others. So let's have a look at these three and let's start with this one. So this is the double called Tooth Shiv. And we know we've got this already from looking at the box. So pick a visible enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter and roll a dice. On a three to four, allocate one damage point to that fighter. On a five to six, allocate a number of damage points to that fighter equal to the value of this ability. So these are nice. I like this ability when used in other warbands. And this could be really useful for these. And certainly for a low point fighter to have that ability only on a double to dish out some serious damage points, especially on this five to six. If you've got a high value for your ability, that's going to do some nice damage. So that's a great one. And then we've also got this one here, the Beast Spirit Juju. And so that one is going to apply to the Bone Totem Bearer. So only to him. And let's have a look at this. So this is called Beast Spirit Juju, another double. Until the end of the battle round, add one to the toughness characteristic of friendly fighters while they are within six inches of this fighter. It's really great having this totem guy in there. He can do a bit of damage. He's not that high in points, but with this like double, you can add toughness to all the friendly fighters within six inches of this fighter for the whole round. And it's um, they don't have to be visible as long as they're within six inches. That's really great. So you put him in with a group and all of those are gonna be improved toughness. And there's a good chance only on a double you could use this in every round if you wanted to that he survives in. So that could be a really useful ability. Definitely need a totem bearer for sure. Right, and now we're on to the third one. And this is a triple, and this is going to apply to the arrow boys. And this is called Loads of Arrows. Add half the value of this ability, rounding up to the attacks characteristic of the next attack action made by this fighter, this activation that targets an enemy fighter more than three inches away. So there we go. This is really great. Add half the value of the ability. So say you're rolling like uh, three, you're going to round that up. You're going to halve it. So that's one and a half. Round it up to two. And then so you can add two to the attacks characteristic of the next attack action. So only one attack action that they make. And the enemy's got to be more than three inches away, which they will be if you're using the arrow boys. So that's really great. You could potentially add one, two or three attacks to your attack characteristic and that's really good so if we flick back and take a look at that you know you've already got like a characteristic of two so it's pretty low but as you would expect for this points and for a, a, an archer miniature um so or fighter so there you could go take that from two to three to four or five so that's really great keep some distance use that ability and ping it in it is a triple so you know it's maybe not going to want to use it too often it's not going to come up that much um but pretty good, I think, for that, for that, for a 90-point fighter to get a nice ability like that. And that can be really useful. 
So that takes care of the fighters, and those are the abilities that are included in the fighters that come with the set. So with the exception of this triple here for the mounted one, you know, you can see you've got access to five out of six abilities there. So really good. But let's take a look at the leader abilities now. Okay, so with the leader abilities, you can see that the arrow boss is pretty much going to get the triple loads of arrows that we just saw. And then the arrow boss, the more boy boss, the chomper are going to get just the leadership ability in addition to the ones they can use by having the faction rune mark. So let's take a look at this universal kind of leader ability, if you like. And the Wurgog Prophet's also going to get that. And also the Savage Big Boss is going to get that. So here we are. And this is a triple ability. So that, that leader ability, there's only one available. And this is a triple called Wa. Add the value of this ability to the move characteristic of friendly fighters within six inches of this fighter when this fighter uses this ability until the end of the battle round. Okay, so this is great. We can start adding to the movement now. So we could use our Totem Bearer to add to the toughness, but now we can also use a triple here from any leader, pretty much. Yeah, from any leader, and that can add to the movement characteristic. Add, and it's the value of the ability. So this is huge for a triple. If you get six, you could add six to the move characteristic of any friendly fighters within six inches till the end of the battle round. So that's a massive, a massive uh, ability there. So we can increase our toughness, increase our movement, and then get right in the action, start dishing it out. And we know they can all take some damage. So they're going to be pretty tough to play if you can use a combination of those two abilities. But now let's look at the individual ones. So for our Wurgog Prophet, we've got this rune mark here. And that's going to apply to this triple. And this is called Beast Mask Dance. Until the end of the battle round, subtract one from the attacks characteristic to a minimum of one of attack actions made by enemy fighters while they are within six inches of this fighter. So here we go, this is great. So we can now start bringing down the attack characteristics of the enemy. And as long as they're within six inches of this fighter, again, they don't have to be visible. So that's really good. So you could hide him behind a wall or something and they could still make use of this triple and can remove one from attacks characteristics. So you've got some great combos potentially here to start uh, kind of bringing down enemy attacks, advancing your movement, advancing your toughness. That's really great. So that's our Wurgog Prophet. And then if you wanted to take the one of the miniatures and make them into a savage big boss, you're going to get access to one extra ability. And that's going to be this one here, which is a quad called Mighty War. Add the value of this ability to the move characteristic of friendly fighters within nine inches of this fighter when this fighter uses this ability until the end of the battle round. Okay, so very similar to the one we've already seen, the triple, where we can add to the move characteristic. Now we can extend that out to nine inches. So again, it applies to the end of the battle round and you can add the value of the ability to movement. So yeah, it's really about pushing these fighters forward. So I mean, for that ability, I probably wouldn't think to use a savage big boss just to get that. Um, but you know, if you want to push them forward that little bit more, you know, and have that extra nine inch range, which is quite a lot on the Warcry board, then that could be quite useful. So there we go. That now sums up all the fighter cards and abilities. This is a great looking set, and I think it's going to be brilliant in Warcry. Loads of character, loads of narrative with these guys, and having this uh, Wurgog Prophet is a great addition, and I think it's going to make to be a fun warband with a cool looking leader. They're going to look really awesome all painted up with all the different weapons. See, so yeah, I'm really happy with this. I think for the price, we've got a lot going on, a lot of customization. We can really personalize this warband. So I'm really happy with this. But it'd be great to hear what you think. I mean, which fighters stand out to you? Do you play the Savage Oryx, maybe in Age of Sigmar, and want to bring it into Warcry? Or you use them in Warcry already? So it'd be great to hear what you think, what abilities you and tactics you like to use. So join in in the comments below. It'd be awesome to hear from you. I'll put links to everything here in the description below. And so, yeah, there'll be affiliate links again. So if you want to check those out, that'd be awesome. And if you like content like this and want to support the channel in a different way, then please check out my Patreon page. It's an awesome place where we hang out on Discord, share our hobby ideas, share photos, help each other out with tips and tricks. And you can also get some content on there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So, yeah, I'll put a link to that in the description below. It'd be awesome to see you there. I can't wait to get these built, painted, get them on the battlefield and start playing with them. But I've got to get those Beasts of Chaos done first before we move on to that. Um, but these will be coming out pretty soon, I think, because they look really great. 
But thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more content like this, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games.